My name is Claire Barlow, and I'm the curator of Queer British Art, 1861 to 1967 at Tate Britain. For Digital Pride, we want to show you some key pieces from this show. So this is Simeon Solomon's Sappho and Arena, and it's one of the few works from the 19th century that engages very directly with same-sex desire. Here we have the poet Sappho, an ancient Greek poet, um, who was associated with the island of Lesbos, giving us the word lesbian. And she is embracing Arena, who seems quite swept off her feet by Sappho's kiss. It's unusual because representations of same-sex desire like this wouldn't have been publicly displayed. But from what we know about Solomon, we know that these works had a very personal significance to him. What's really exciting about this work is that it's such an early work that is representing a relationship between two women. Behind this door, Oscar Wilde was imprisoned at Reading Jail. Wilde's story is perhaps one of the best known about queer icons from the past. He was a famous writer, a wit, a playwright, incredibly successful in his career. But he sued the Marquess of Queensbury for libel after Queensbury accused him of posing as a sodomite. Sadly, at the trial, evidence came out of Wilde's relationships with young men, and this led to a subsequent trial in which he was convicted of gross indecency. For me, this is one of the most emotionally powerful objects in the exhibition. Wilde's story is so familiar to us, We've heard it many times, we've read it in books. It's so familiar that we almost can't see it anymore. But when you stand in front of this, you realize that glittering career coming down to this point. Wilde is such an extraordinary figure. He's one of the wittiest and most intelligent men of his day. And objects like this remind us of the real oppression that people in same-sex relationships experienced. is a self-portrait by the artist Gluck. Gluck was born Hannah Gluckstein, but rejected that name for the name Gluck. No prefix, no suffix, no quotes. Gluck was phenomenally successful and exhibited at the Fine Arts Society in shows that were visited by celebrities of the day and members of the royal family. This portrait was painted towards the end of Gluck's relationship with Nesta Obermeyer a woman who was also the wife of an American industrialist. I think there's a hint of sadness in the portrait that perhaps reflects the end of that relationship. There's a crease around the eyes that makes Gluck look quite weary. But still you have this jutting chin. This is somebody who is willing to take on the world. This scene of a Boston nightclub is by Edward Burrow. The club is Izzy Orts, and as you can see, it has a really diverse range of different people in it. There's straight couples, queer couples, as sailors who are the subject of many queer fantasies. For me, scenes like this really capture how precious some of these spaces must have been at a time of oppression. Here, for a moment, you could leave outside your worries. You could find friends, meet lovers, and dance the night away. Hockney made life painting for a diploma as part of his final exam submission at the Royal College of Art. He told a story about how his tutors wanted him to create a life drawing. And he has included one in the painting in the form of this dry academic study of the desiccated skeleton. But the real figure in the painting is this buff bronze man. And in case you wondered what his source was for this beauty, he's put the word physique across the top of the painting. The word physique is a reference to American beefcake magazines like Physique Pictorial. These were ostensibly about wrestling and bodybuilding, but for certain of their audience, there was more on display than might immediately meet the eye. It's a bold statement, 
And it's also a work which encapsulates what Hockney has said about his early paintings, that these works are homosexual propaganda.